The international break is nearly over, which means FPL is back. And it's time for me to hit the wildcard button. And here is my team selection for Game Week 30. All right, I'm going to start off just by looking at my team as it is before hitting the wildcard button because I think I face a similar issue to a number of other FPL managers in that I don't think my team is all that bad on the face of it, but there are a couple of players that I'm missing and I just don't have enough in the bank or enough free transfers to bring them in um, without taking major hits. I really want Salah and Son in my team, basically. I think they're both... You know, we'll decide later on who is the best captain, but I think out of the two of them, there is the best captain for Game Week 30 out of the two. And then Salah has got Sheffield United in Game Week 31, so I believe he's the best captain for that week. So it's between Salah and Son for 30, and then probably Salah in Game Week 31. And I don't have either of these players at the moment, so for that reason, and the fact that I could probably change some odds around in terms of defence, double up on some teams that have double Game Weeks in 34, potentially change my goalkeepers around, you know, I think there are some changes I could make to my team outside of that as well. And I think Game Week 30, for me at least, is the prime time to play the wild card. All right, before diving into the wild card draft itself, I thought it'd just be worth looking at the fixtures we've got coming up. And that will hopefully explain further reasons as to why I'm, I'm playing my wild card, right? Like I said, I don't have Salah and Son at the moment. I need to take a big hit to get them in if I want them for Game Week 30 and 31 because I don't have enough cash to bring them both in and I've only got one free transfer. That was number one reason. Number two reason is I think it's four weeks in advance. Don't get me wrong. And there could be, you know, anything could happen between now and Game Week 34, right? But we've got a double Game Week announced in Game Week 34 and I don't feel, you know, it's kind of set up for it, but I don't think I'm max, I'll am max. i be able to maximise the double Game Week in 34 if I don't play my wild card you know, soon. And the fact that I don't have Salah and Son, that sort of convinces me that Game Week 30, for me at least, is the best time to play it. Bearing in mind, I don't have my free hit left, so we're going to have to use free transfers between 34 and 37 to prep for that double. But I don't think that's the end of the world. So yeah, Game Week 34, we've got a double for Liverpool, Arsenal, Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, Wolves, Everton and Sheffield United. Now, I'm not suggesting that all of those teams you should cover for in Game Week 34. I think, for example, Sheffield United, possibly Crystal Palace, possibly Everton players, maybe Wolves players as well, could be outscored by some of the top players with a single Game Week, right? I wouldn't rule out Erling Haaland outscoring, you know, Sarabia or someone like that, right, from Wolves, who you might want to target for the double Game Week. But overall, I think it's worth targeting. And playing your wildcard now, three or four weeks in advance, I don't think it's the worst idea because... Yes, you're kind of riding your luck with injuries and things happening, etc. over the next few game weeks, but I still think it's worth preparing your team ahead of time. Right, here's the draft then, and I'd say goalkeeper and defensive-wise is probably where I've still got the most question marks around this team, mainly down to the goalkeeper at the moment. I'm currently going for a Kelleher and Petrovic double up in goal. Now, I've currently got Kelleher in there. That obviously might change if we get news that Allison is going to return soon. But I haven't been able to see any news on Allison anywhere, which makes me think he could be still out for a sustained period of time. And if he is, you cannot ignore, in my opinion, you cannot ignore Kelleher at 3.8 million. You know, Connor Bradley is another option defensively for Liverpool, but I think Trent's trajectory to coming back is going to be quicker than Allison's. And I just have question marks on just how many minutes Connor Bradley will get when Trent's back in the team. And particularly with Liverpool doubling in game week 34, do you want to own three Liverpool players and one of them being a major minutes doubt? And that's obviously one of the reasons why I've got doubts around Kelleher as well. So hopefully we get some more Allison news. If we do, I think I'm going to stick, you know, and it suggests that he's going to be out for a sustained period of time. I'm going to stick with Kelleher. I think if we don't, I've got Dubravka currently in my team at 4 million and I can still afford this draft if I keep Dubravka. So I'll probably just go Petrovic and start him. But Kelleher's expected points total for the next few game weeks is fantastic. And it's actually above Petrovic's. I still think there's a decision to be made on who is the best person to start for game week 30. Kelleher with Brighton, Petrovic with Burnley. Currently going with Kelleher. Although obviously, I you know, wouldn't rule out a Chelsea clean sheet against Burnley. But you can see there, I've already got Gusto in defence. So I think I'd rather have Kelleher and, and spread the risk. Udogi and Gabriel are the other two defenders I haven't mentioned already. I've got Udogi in there. I've had him since the start of the season. To be honest, that's a real strike of luck I've had in the game since the start of the season. 
So I've owned him since he's been 4.5 million. So for me, there could be slightly better defensive options for around the price, but because I have quite a bit of money and invested in him and he's worth 4.7 in my team currently, I don't see any reason not to just continue with him. Gabriel, yes, he's got Man City in game week 30 at the Etihad and he'll probably concede. Comparing that to eight Nori and Richards, who are my defensive bench players, as you can see there, I still think he's going to score more points than the both of them because I think he's so threatening from set pieces. And I just wouldn't rule out him scoring. You know, it could well be eight Nori that starts in his place come deadline, but at the moment, Udogi, Gusto, and Gabriel are my starting three. One other worry is the amount of flags that this team has, right? I think most of these flags are international precautions where players aren't actually injured but their club teams are you know, keeping an eye on their players and making sure they're not getting overused because Gusto and Gabriel are key cogs to their various teams. You know, and the last thing that clubs want to be doing is taking a risk on their players. So again, obviously have to check the press conferences to make sure these players aren't actually out of action, but I think they'll be fine to play. Gusto, of course, is a little bit of a, you know, starting risk as Reese James emerges, you know, as a, a fit player again, if that does happen before the end of the season. But, I mean, we've seen Rhys James survives a couple of games and then he gets injured again. And I don't see that changing. So, I think Gusto is going to be pretty much playing every game for Chelsea, to be honest. Richards and 8 Nori as my couple of bench defenders. 8 Nori, I think he's got something like four attacking returns in his last four games or something crazy like that. And then in game week 31, he's got Burnley, 32 West Ham. And then he doubles in 34. So, I think he's a good option based on all of that. And Richards, it's him v Lascelles as my 3.9 million defender, basically. And... I'm still a little bit undecided as to who I go for. Richards is in there currently just because Newcastle are the worst defensive team in the league statistically over the last couple of months. On to the midfield then, and I don't think you can beat this midfield four, to be honest. Palmer, Son, Salah and Saka. I think these are the best midfielders in the game right now. Three of them, well, all four of them being penalty takers actually for their respective team. Salah, Saka, sorry, not necessarily taking all of them for Arsenal but he is their designated penalty taker. Obviously, Son, Salah and Palmer are their team's penalty takers. Most of them have got decent fixtures for the next few game weeks. They're fantastic options, have been all season. And I think, you know, I don't really need to explain myself anymore for picking these four players, in my opinion. You'll see the armbands currently on Palmer. That's not how I'm going to finish up. What I thought I'd do is leave it to the end to decide who I'm actually going to stick the armband on. But yeah, I don't think these four midfielders need any more explanation, really. I think they're the four best in the game right now. And yeah, I'm quite happy to go with them. The one player that does miss out, unfortunately, is Phil Foden. I think come game week 37, when Man City double, if the title isn't already wrapped up, he'll probably come back into my team. But I just I can't fit him in over these players. And yes, I know his minutes have been pretty guaranteed across this season so far of Foden's. And with Man City having a fair few injuries amongst their squad coming from the international break, still few players coming back, etc. I do think his minutes are going to be pretty good. But... I just think these four guys, all four being on penalties, being guaranteed 90-minute starting men for their teams, yeah, I, I just I just can't look past them. Saka's obviously got a flag, much like Gusto and Gabriel, but I think that's a precautionary thing from Arsenal when he'll be fit to play against Man City. Yes, of course, he does have Man City, but I don't think Man City have been amazing defensively this season, and I wouldn't rule out, you know, Arsenal scoring through a Saka penalty or, or something like that. I, I, I just wouldn't. I think Saka could quite easily score in that game. And I still think he's a better option to start than Sarabia, who, of course, I've gotten in as a sort of bargain basement midfielder at 4.7 million, who, of course, doubles if I choose to start him in game week 34. Depending on who's in the Wolves squad, he could also be on penalties for them as well. So, yeah, those are my five midfielders. Up front then, Haaland, Darwin Nunes and Solanke make up my front three. I've gotten rid of Watkins, who... Yes, of course, he's a great option, and I understand he's probably the top scoring player in the game at the moment, but just over the next few game weeks, I much prefer Darwin Nunes. He's another player, another one that's flagged at the moment, so of course I need to bear in mind that he's flagged and wait for press conference use, etc. But I think it's another one that is just a precaution, and he'll be fine to start in game week 30. I'm pretty sure he's had the entire international break off anyway. You can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong there, but yeah, I, I think he's going to be fine to play. Brighton, Sheffield United and Man United. I mean, he could score in all three of those games quite easily. And of course, doubles in game week 34. I feel like he really has hit the goal scoring form now that we've been patiently waiting. Well, manager, some managers have been patiently waiting for him to get. He gets so many chances in pretty much every game I see him play. He gives defenders real handfuls. Just finishing has been an issue for him. 
But in recent game weeks, that's not been an issue and he's actually managed to find the back of the net. So I'm excited to own Darwin Nunes for the next few game weeks. So Lanky, obviously with his double in 34, I think I've got to keep him. I mean, Everton, Crystal Palace and Luton is his next three. The one kind of doubt you'd have around Solanke was the injury that he picked up. But given he's had a couple of weeks off over the international break, I'm hoping that injury has had some time to heal up and he's had some time to rest. So I think he's going to be good for the next three game weeks and hopefully back to the form that we saw pre-injury. And then, yes, he's got Arsenal. You know, there are doubts around him as captain for sure. But on a wild card, I think you've got to pick Erling Haaland, right? And even in game week 34, when other players have a double compared to his single game week, I'm still tempted to start him. So... Next thing to discuss is who am I going to captain? Right, I showed this little stats comparison on my Game Week 30 thoughts video, but what it did was show the players' stats across the season in terms of goals, assists, expected goals, expected assists, etc. And then also compared the quality of opposition that they're facing, right? I'm not going to talk about it in detail because you can see all the numbers there for yourself. You can pause the video if you want to want to read a bit more detail into them. But essentially, I determined that Salah is probably first place in terms of overall numbers, but has the worst fixture. Palmer and Son, I personally think there's a little to split them in terms of their numbers um, and their fixtures. Fixture-wise, Son has by far and away the best fixtures. So you look there, Luton, XGC the last five games is way and above both Brighton and, and Burnley. In fact, Brighton have actually been a decent defence, I would say, over the last five game weeks, which suggests to me they're actually quite a tough fixture. Yes, Salah's at Anfield, and we know, all know the Anfield factor at, at Liverpool. But for me, I think based on the fact that there's not a whole lot between the numbers between Salah and Son, four games, I guess. But the quality of fixture, in my opinion, is night and day. Luton is such, is such a good fixture for attacking players at the moment. But Brighton, not so much. So for me, at the moment, my armband is on Hyungmin min Son. You can see there, I'm 88k overall. Got my wildcard active, so the number of free transfers I have doesn't matter. 70.2 expected points is what Draft Town expect me to get this week. And I've got 0.2 million in the bank. And yeah, that's my wildcard draft. One, one little thing that I'm a little bit worried about, and it's one thing that I think I've made worse about this team by playing my wildcard, but I'm happy to do that because, of course, it allows me to get Salah and Son and be better prepared for the double in 34 the one thing I am missing is double Arsenal defence. My previous team had it and it was paying off really well. Arsenal were by far and away the best defence in the league. You know, I got multiple games where Gabriel got an attack and return, Saliba got an attack and return, or they both kept a clean sheet and that they were the best defenders in the game for that period. So that's the one thing I'm slightly miffed about missing out on because I just can't quite afford it. But I just think the benefit of having Salah and Son is, is better than, you know, the difference in points between potentially Gusto and Saliba because... Gusto and Saliba, I think they'll be a little in it. Whereas, you know, likes of Bowen compared to Salah and, and Foden compared to Son, I think there's a bigger gap, basically, especially in terms of their minutes and the fact that Son and Salah are on pens. So, yeah, a little bit myth that I can't squeeze in double Arsenal defence. Although, you know, come game week 34, I think I might be able to wangle that with some transfers that I make. But right now, I can't do it. A little bit miffed about that. But other than that, I think this is the best wildcard draft I can make with the budget I've got available. Let me know in the comments if there are any changes you would suggest. All right, and that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. Like I said, let me know in the comments if there's anything you think I should change about this team. You know, I'm always open to hearing people's suggestions. I don't claim to be a seer or, a, you know, all-knowing person in terms of FPL. I always appreciate if anyone's got some suggestions for me. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like rating. And if you want to see more content from me, you can subscribe to the Gold to Gold channel, which should be just there on screen. And yeah, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one.